Greetings everyone, I am Natus, one of the rules from the underworld, or specifically the ruler of Manga Hell, and today we will be reacting to the newest chapter of My Academia, chapter 348, titled Unacquitted. I guess this is referring to Togo's love? I don't know, but anyways, in this chapter, we're probably mostly focusing mostly on Toga versus Izuku and all that type of stuff, that love triangle, whatever you want to say it, in a hopefully not the cringy, annoying being way, like most sitcoms have it. Or oh, namely how CW shows have, superhero shows have it. Am I wrong? Let, tell me about me wrong in the comments. But yeah, anyways, let's get into this chapter reaction. Well, this chapter. Anyway, we start off in narrations, we see uh, Izuku a bit, uh, you know, a bit, sh a bit shocked by the reactions. Izuku's it's like, Izuku Midoriya was the knife wielder of One for All, and the key to this particular battle, battle since the advent of the extra extraordinary, One for All had been the only power in Japan, no, in the entire world, that the Shadow Mastermind All for One obsessed over. And now this boy was the vassal for that very power. I feel like the new world of Quirk could be considered in this uh, edition, but to be fair, it's not like New Worlds has been around for that long. It was only a uh, star and stripes that had it, and to be fair, it's kind of gone now, so what can you do, I suppose? We can't have good things all the time, but yeah. So anyways, the nation, he had encountered Himiko Toko a number of times by this point, but since she had never come right out and expressed her affection in words, he never realized that what, the way she felt about him. And then we have Izuku, kind of like his eyes, the guy's eyes swirling, and it's like, like, saying like, did you say boyfriend? <laughs> Which is, I think, a bit true. Like, I think Toko did say a few times that she likes him, but I don't think she, it was actually ever they said in front of him, or like he had to, you know, was in a moment where he could actually think of that through. Like, the first time, I don't think they even like talked a bit much. The second time was, I think, really quickly when they're just like passing through. The third time was, I think, doing the whole, well, well was doing the whole uh, provisional license exam where she was, she was pretending to be some other student, which didn't make sense. And then for her to say or something like that. Well, the fourth time was, um, if my memory serves me correctly, was in the Hasekai, where, again, it was a very quick brief. I think it was just like, oh, there you are, and that type of thing gone. So, yeah, I guess it does make sense. So, as anyways, they were then you're saying, because of, of for all these triumphs, he was still just un damn that. <laughs> Whoa, is this Baku saying or something? Was it Baku there? There we are here. Or is it gotta be his voice? Is Baku's voice actor? Act because, <laughs> oh, that's a bit funny. So, as then we have Izuku be like, what you talking about? As he starts screaming, as they have to talk about getting all, uh, all uh, last four or all shy. So she's like, I loved you since the moment I first saw you. You were covered in blood, train cap, and, and you look just like my first crush, which is actually true. Like, yeah, a lot of people say, oh, I guess she was into Deku's brother and all that. I guess it's actually a good reason why, because it actually did look the same, like, like, that's actively addressing the story. I guess at least now we know why the reason isn't behind it. And just, anyway, then she says, you're so cool, Izuku, as then we see, like, a, bit, a shot of, like, villains and heroes flying around. And then we get, like, a crazy smile, like, honestly, kind of a hentai face right now, as Sinto was like, I want to be so, be you, so let me suck some blood. From which area, Toga? From which area? But yeah, anyways, there have Izuku like, boyfriend, like a like a guy you would take to the amusement park for a date? Who who you hold hands with? Who you just split a creep with? Who you split a creep with? I mean, that's is it that kind of like a dessert or something? I'm not sure. Anyways, then we get Ochako who's shaking a bit, like. She's trying to steal my man! <laughs> so, yeah, I, kind of a mood killer here with them talking about love, but I think it's supposed to be like one of those you're not in the right mindset type of thing, similar to like how Vanika isn't like aware of the battle going on, but she's more like, oh, let's have a fight, uh, Want Noel. Maybe that's like what we're going here with, but you know, it's kind of a mood killer, honestly. 
especially in this kind of scenario, especially with how, you know, dark it seems to be going. So, yeah, anyways, they have Toga, like, uh, like covering her face with her, her, her face, as the face is also going fully dark. As they were talking about, like, for me, turning into someone else is all about love. Then we have Izuku listening to it. It's, as they look to Izuku, Togo continues with, it's the only way I can feel satisfied. As then we get, I think, some of the limbs, something that the high end normal is sending out to go to the ground. Or maybe something has been fired from it, but I think it's the high end normal sending something. Well, then you high end normal send something. As then we have some of the heroes being back over Second wave incoming, watch out! <laughs> yeah, it was definitely not any high end normal. And as then we see like a few uh, rocks, and I think a few heroes being hit by those rocks, passing through as the water is drouching in Toga. And so it's like, tell me, hero. As then we get a bit of shot of the heroes and villains fighting each other. And so it's like, what do you want to do to me? Well, I know what you want to do with the heroes, but I'm not sure what they want to do with you. I was there, uh, Walker, listening to this again, remembering the conversation they had in the First War, as I was like, well, Himiko was like, what do you want to do to me? I don't know, now they're giving a dominatrix type of vibe, so I have no idea. So as, as, then we have Izuku, like, uh, trying to get away, it's like, as, as it was like, another attack's coming. As it was like, I don't know. She, and then we have Izuku thinking to himself, she can cloak her own presence. If I lose her in this chaotic battle, she'll be one step ahead. So I guess, this is, the, in the unofficial translations, I think it said, like, it's absolute that he could defeat her, but, you know, it's the trickery of how to catch her. Which is actually a pretty smart idea, because, you know, you kind of have to, like, Togo cannot fight Izuku. Like, that's a, everyone in our brain knows that. The problem is, you know, it's kind of, she's one of those characters, like, you have a hard time tracking down, you know, like, basically, like, yeah, you can beat them, but, like, find them and locate them first, and that's a lot more difficult. It's got, like, Kuro Gary, think about that, like, it's not difficult, not difficult to defeat, but, you know, you have to get through the Black Mist, or you have to, like, get the body attack before, you know, the Black Mist gets you. So yeah, anyways, then with Izuku be like, I always wanted to be strong like All Might. So I get how you feel, Toga. Like how trying to be like someone else can for, can feel fulfilling. Which it, which makes sense that like Izuku would be saying that as there's also some few things coming at him and blocking it. Anyways, then we have Izuku thinking, she doesn't trigger my danger sense. So in a way, this is the worst matchup I could ask for. Uh, again, Zuko, even with Bowser, just that you can probably defeat her easily. Again, she doesn't have that much strength or ability or anything like that. Like, I mean, she had not curious as the hits, but again, curious as it was, was not to be all that tall. I think, like, I think that the device she was using was just meant to, like, have more of like, a hand to hand attack. But yes, anyways, there are Zuko, but I can't imagine wanting to share the same heart and mind as him. Which is kind of like what Toga is trying to do, like at least appearance wise, when she's trying to share that. And then we see the shot of Toga like running around the water. As then we have Izuku saying, and I would never want to hurt someone I love. So yeah. And then we get a shot of Toga's face, and I may. Toga, I don't think I can make that much of a despair face, but I feel like this is one of those faces. Well. Our love story is over, or I don't want you to be my boyfriend kind of face, like, oh well, it's over. So yeah, anyways, then we uh, see a sort of a few villains and heroes uh, fighting. I think one hero uh, uh, was about, was taking one of the villains' custody. As then we get the next, as we think we get, uh, it, I think Toga's flashback with what we were telling her, as they were like, why can't you just be normal, act like a normal little girl? Then we see Curious, uh, I was actually talking about Curious there before, so it's kind of funny that she actually gets here. As we see Curious there, and she's like holding the way she held Toga when they when they were fighting at the end. It's like, how sad. As they see a chuckle scream, like, if you're gonna live as you please, then you also have to live with the consequences. So yeah. It's just kind of funny how Kyori seems to be like one of the more devel one of the more major in terms of like Liberation Army characters, yet she's like the one that was killed in the fast to get rim out. <laughs> kind of funny. But yeah, anyways, then we have Toga's eyes, only her eyes, 
So I, I don't think it's a close up of her face, just her eyes and a white background. Uh, as then we have, uh, it should be like, Izuku, you're just, you're just, no, actually, I think that's still gonna be like, Izuku, you're just like Ochako, and just like my mom and dad. As then we have, uh, we have, I think Izuko or Chako being like thoughts of Himiko Togo popped into my head. Thinking to themselves, as then we have uh, Toga putting her mask on, getting those, uh, getting some kind of new weapons that seem to be like extra, like it, it seems like her wire, those wires that she usually has for knives, seems to have like been swapped with from normal, like you know, wires and knives to like. Kind of mechanical knives and wires, well, those uh, in syringes or whatever, to a point like for more combat. As Toga starts to rushing at them, and she's like, You think that heroes and those they protect are the only ones who count as real people? Which I think is supposed to be more angry, but it's hard to tell because it's again Toga. Plus, I'm meant to say it's been over the place, so it's kind of hard to tell. So, yeah, anyways, then we, uh, wait, we have Izuku be like, She looked so sad. And then we have a chocolate, uh, we have this talk saying, so you people like, so people like, and you and I are destined to remain apart? Uh, kinda. I mean, to be fair, though, uh, you need the messengers to be your boyfriend or, girl, or girlfriend or whoever you want to fuck with. So you are gonna have to be stuck with not Izuku. So yeah, anyways, then we have a shot of uh, Toga sending her blades, which Daku is able to, I think, block or avoid. As they, and we have Ochako coming at Toga, it's like, not so fast, Simiko Toga. As then we have Toga sending some of her, uh, some of the attack. We have uh, Toga being grabbed by Ochako. As then we have like a bit sent a bit away. As then we have Ochako saying, ever since we met that, that day, I've been thinking hard about you. I'm guessing she's referring to the Second War. As then we have, uh, uh, Toga saying, Oh, you haven't even been on my mind, not anymore. So, yeah, I thought maybe I had a shot with Izuku, but nope, I'm over all that now. Uh, I guess she's no longer being in love with Jocko, Izuku, and I guess she kind of lost her interest in uh, Tsuru as well. So, as ever, they have Izuku be like, Uwaka! As then we have uh, them find. Toga and Uraka finally separating as uh, Toga's back on the water as she sends some of the, those uh, blades at Uchako from behind. More copper than it in Xenon, by the way! As then we have Toga saying, The world rejected me, so I reject the world! Which I guess kind of well, doesn't make sense in her twisted mind. As then we have, Uch have Uchako looking back, it's like, as then we have uh, Toga saying this like really weird voice, like, Uchako! It's really sad as she appears behind Uchako with a dagger and she's like all kind of sh covered in shells to be able to stab. And then we have uh, the knife from, from uh, uh, Toga going there. As then we have uh, Toga saying, I was so sure you would understand me. <laughs> but that, and then gets and she gets into uh, Uchako's shoulder as uh, Toga's like. After all, you and I both feel uh, fell for the same. As in, uh, why was she about uh, what to say? Same guy. We have Suyu showing up and kicking Toga away. While Izuku seems to have left a bit of uh, his black uh, black whip around Toga's body to take her as well away. As then we have uh, Izuku saying, "Suyu, I saw Suyu. I mean, Foppy." And she's back in the action, which has actually been a while since Sue has actually done anything, so it's kind of nice to see her final hair. And then we have Sue so saying, Sorry, it took me so long. So, as then we have Izubek, Are you you hurt? And then we have uh, Ochako, only her shoulder is like, Nah, just a scratch. Better get that knife. My blood's on it. Which is referring to the fact that Toga literally said that she can use Ochako's uh, blood and powers. Which just made me wonder if she can like use two quirks at the same time, like if she eats twice as, as well as the chocolates, can she like make a copy of, of twice, can make like a 
use both of them, or can she just use one at the same time? Like, I don't think it was ever stated specifically, but I could see it happening. As, anyways, then we have, uh, I think, Tsuyo, she's the, or oh, maybe, because, like, she's the least predictable of our opponents. So we war warped her to an isolated island to back. Too bad that plan backfired, which is kind of true, but to be fair, Izuku could probably take down the forces pretty quickly, it's just that you're gonna use a bunch of other uh, top hitters on Shiraki, who is probably killing them as we are talking about, or oh, at the very least, beat the shit out of them. As it, anyways, then we have, uh, uh, we have, I think, uh, Doga saying, there, I cut it. I'm assuming she was referring to, uh, Jocko's blood. And then we have uh, Toro be like, to you. Uh, anyways, then we have two of the get going, uh, for saying, get going, Gidako chanting. Think about romance here is the least, last thing you need to be doing. <laughs> Which is kind of true. And I feel like a lot of people in the fanbase have this kind of reaction right now. Oh, wait, wait, not for a skirt shot of Toga. Just feel like I should mention it for the sake of it. So here's then we have uh, a bit of a more of an outside, a bit of a away perspective from on the battlefield. As we see, like a bunch of like stones going around, a bunch of water crashing over. As we have to saying, we'll deal with Himiko Togo as planned. Uravity has gone up against her more times than anyone, so she'll take the lead here, and we'll get the job done. Wait, has she? I guess she went up against Toga three times? I mean, to be fair, uh, actually two times, with one just being a quick encounter. Unless there was a bit... No, I, feel was, I don't think there was a fight with Uraka and, and Toga when she was fighting this guy's Kamui, but... But, yeah. So, I guess we're gonna have Froppy and Uraka versus uh, Toga as Daku is leaving for the main... for Shiroake. So, yeah. Anyways, then we have... Uh, uh, Izuku there, looking at Uraka as Uraka's like, Deku, get Shigaraki. We were actually a bit of the wound, and yes, it was a bit more than just a scratch. I guess those, uh, that, those leather, what, spandex, whatever those costumes are made of, isn't all that good and durable there. Anyways, then we have uh, Izuku remembering when they were on that, um, on that, uh, mountain, or that, like, whatever it's called, called when you were looking at the cross at the sea about destruction. As he remembers what they were, what, uh, I think it was Uraka was someone saying this, it's like, I guess both of us are kind of weird, referring to the fact that both of them kind of, like, feel bad for Toga and Shigaraki, even though, you know, there's, like, even though they have, like, no reason to, it's just, like, their heroic instincts tell them to feel bad. Anyways, then we have, which I'll be like, good luck, as she gives him, like, a bit of a cheerful smile, as then we have, uh, uh, uh Toga standing back up, with all of those uh, spot blades all over, and one seems to be actually destroyed. Or, well, two, two of them seem to already be like destroyed, or the very the blade part seems to be destroyed. And she's going back on, like being kind of like this very creepy, monstrous way. And she's like, "It's so hard to live being me, even though I'm full of all this love," <laughs> which is very thing uh, kicked up. As now we have. We're gonna be like, go no! And then we have Izuku turning aside and just speed blitzing away on the. I'm assuming this isn't a. Wa I'm assuming this isn't a, an ocean. It's just he's blitzing through something, but I can't tell. Actually, I wish it's not an ocean. Like he seems to be already pretty far away from the island, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, in fact, I need to go look at more of a perspective shot, but it, it might actually be one running on water now. Or, I mean, there may not actually be that big of a gap in water, to be fair. I mean, most of these gaps just seem to be, like, around, like, I don't know, somewhere around the feet range. It's just that the whole splashing around makes it look big. But it doesn't help that one time Toga it literally gets fully covered from the ocean. So, yeah. But, actually, there is an ocean... There seems to be a connection to the ocean, so this is supposed to be somewhere more isolated, so I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if that he's actually right on the ocean now. But, yeah. Anyway, this is the end of the chapter. Now, I hope you guys, guys, so, as for where this is gonna go, I could see this either focusing full, next chapter could either focus fully on this battle between Toga, Uraka, and Foppy, which, honestly, we should have kind of seen coming, if we think about it in the high side. 
as all oh, this could be, um, or we could cut away to focus on Shoto versus Darby because that hasn't been addressed all that much. Like I could easily see something similar now being the beginning, like where we have like we cut to all of these different areas where these covers have these battles, but then we cut um we actually start to the more finishing battles. Like it's hard to say specifically because there's nothing really to like keep things going. Like just as long as where characters are and being a few random villains is more than enough. Like maybe Shadow Star characters defeat a few high end normals. But for the most part, there's nothing really all that, you know, that could distract from it. And in fact, the fights right now feel very forward, which doesn't make sense since it's more is supposed to end at the, I think, around the end of the year, maybe a little bit more in the next year, but anyways, we'll see. So anyways, with that said, I hope you like this reaction. I hope you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you mortals next time. Goodbye.